complexities turn to ban. Cloud Nines turn to ban. Complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Hello and welcome back everybody to some more Dota 2 action. This is going to be the lower bracket semifinals for the Summit 4 American Qualifiers. We're going to be taking a look at Complexity up against Cloud9 in what should be an absolutely fantabulous series. I am at Lyrical Dota, joined today by Llama Down Under. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. I'm really excited. I don't know if you caught their game this morning, but this is the rematch. The level and 1 Roche. It was gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> I think Complexity... They have a lot of options. One, they could pick the same lineup and just try to bait them into thinking it's Roshan, right? You got so many options all of a sudden, and they're in Cloud9's head, apparently. After that last game, Ritsu was very upset. <laughs> Well, just to fill everybody on in, in the Star Ladder tournament earlier today, uh, there was a best of one that ended up taking place because uh, they needed to tie, uh, have a tiebreaker between Complexity and Cloud9. Complexity came on out with a little bit of an unusual draft. They weren't entirely sure what, what they're going to be able to do. And then we saw a level one Roshan come, uh, mainly by virtue of being able to... Oh my god, we got to get into the draft in a second. Anyways, level one Roshan, people were upset, and Complexity knocked them out of the tournament. This is a rematch now in a situation where they can potentially knock them out of the tournament again. Uh, Winter Wyvern is the first pick there for Cloud9 with a Doom Lich uh, uh, for Complexity as their first picks. Darkseer, Shadow Fiend, Io, and Gyrocopter all taken as well. So Doom gets through. Pretty, uh, pretty unique there. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised the Gyrocopter was banned out. It feels like some teams prize him more than others. I don't know about you, but I've seen games where he's banned first round, picked first round, and then games where nobody touches him in the draft. But Doom, some nerfs, still really strong, and Tusk Wyvern, that is a massive support combo. Could also be MSS's offlane Tusk, but 1437 plays both the Wyvern and the Tusk really well. Makes a lot happen around the map. Yeah, definitely. He is uh, definitely showing up. I think I saw a game the other day with him. Um, I think that it was actually the last game that they played in this tournament where he was able to save an ally from a gank in the mid lane, snowballing through, and it just turned the whole course of the game. That spell and all of Tusk's kit is just incredibly powerful for both defensive or offensive purposes. Um, I think... It, the other thing here to keep in mind, Ritsu, definitely an incredibly talented player, uh, tends to just focus on three heroes, I feel like. Obviously, Anti-Mage and Ember Spirit, and then the third one is actually the Gyrocopter. He's played that a pretty significant amount of time, and this morning I believe that he played it also, if I'm remembering yeah, that correctly, he did. Um, although they did lose. But nonetheless, we're still not going to be seeing it. Um, and interesting that they're banning that out for themselves. Brood also taken out, as is the Alchemist and the TA. No cheese abound for the Broodmother quite yet. Yeah, Chessie's Broodmother, really, really fantastic. Another thing I wanted to mention about Complexity is they do... Vlad, maybe you folks don't know, he's playing for them right now. He's actually from Russia, so they're at a ping disadvantage. And also there are some language issues there in that... Vlad isn't completely fluent in English, so apparently they just kind of communicate Five via ping. So that's the IO ban out for him. The chess, the brood is banned out for Chessie, and then the TA is what Swindle used this morning, as you mentioned. There are a lot of kind of almost respect bans coming out from Cloud9. I love seeing that. Yeah, definitely. They uh, they know what they need to sort of take out of the pool for them, at least at this point. And then as we've talked about, I mean, maybe a little bit of a burgeoning rivalry here as well. I took down some stats on complexity the other day. Vlad as a player for them so far has gone nine and seven on very defensive supports. You think about Io, he's four and three, Winter Wyvern three and three, Shadow Demon one and oh, Dazzle one and one. On all other supports, he's zero oh and 10. Yeah. This is a guy that plays defensive support to the max and uh, already taking the Winter Wyvern out of the pool. I would expect expect to see something along the lines of maybe a dazzle for him uh although maybe not super necessary and considering the lich is also taken out i'm curious to see what they're gonna bring up for him 100 percent. it's something where it does feel like his hero pool that he's successful on maybe a bit smaller and also i have to imagine 
I'm really impressed he plays Io on such high ping, but stuff like Dazzle and that, it's just really hard to get Shallow Graves off right. So really interesting to see. But Complexity, they might also go to pick up a core next, um, something maybe Swindle Melons is familiar with. He also has been playing their offlane, so I don't know if this is a Zizzy. Okay, I was going to say it might be a Zizzy Doom. I think it for sure might be because Slaughter offlane, but it could be the core Slaughter. Either of these two heroes can be offlane or position one. They're both incredibly, f I mean, they're not incredibly flexible, but they're relatively flexible just by virtue of how strong they are. And, you know, Doom, no matter where you put him, except potentially mid, uh, is going to have a good time. You know, Scorched Earth, despite the fact that it did just get nerfed, is still going to be an incredibly strong spell. Gives him a lot of sustain in that lane. The problem that the hero does have, obviously, is the low armor at the early stages. And even as you get into the later stages, until you start itemizing to be able to put up with that downfall of the hero, um, they do also ban out the Razor. Uh, just sort of the strong lanes. It looks like that's what Complexity are aiming to do, is own these lanes a little bit. With Lich already taken on out there, that's what this hero does in spades. You've got... Uh, You've got Sacrifice to make sure that the lane equilibrium is where you want it. You're also going to be able to sort of spam on out that nuke that you got. To me, this feels like that's what they're trying to do. And to combat that, oh, Cloud9 ended up taking the Windranger. I think this is also sort of just a, a deny pick. The yeah. Windranger Slardar combo is so strong. Definitely a bit of a block pick and a comfort hero. As you mentioned, Complexity, I, I interviewed them before after they had played Cloud9 earlier, and they... Uh, they, they've mentioned before that you have to win your lanes against Cloud9. They're such an experienced team when it comes to Dota with players like Brax1437 and MSS. It's really hard to beat them if you've lost the lanes because they're going to beat you in late game anyway. They're just so experienced. They make great rotations. It's trying to win. Um, but for complexity, dealing with Windrunner, they have quite a bit of lockdown here. And depending on where that Doom goes, you can certainly make life suck for her if she doesn't get the Windrunner first. Yeah, definitely. That's just the worst if you end up getting taken out. Because the, the hero relies upon that mechanic to be able to be balanced. Like, that's one of the most important things. So you end up getting the jump on top of her, whether it's through a Blink Dagger on Slardar, or uh, you end up being able to get Doom off, as you mentioned. It's just, you're just going to melt. Uh, Queen of Pain, also another very interesting dynamic there. Another hero that fares very well against the Wind Ranger. It's going to come down a lot in this game, I believe, to... And the Ember Spirit's picked up. I'm imagining safely, and we'll come back to that in a second. But I'm imagining that here... The Wind Ranger, you just need to be able to uh, survive the initial salvo. Make sure that somebody is there to keep you alive around that six, or at least your positioning is solid enough that you're not going to get a big old yell in your face and get destroyed there in lane. Yeah, this Ember Spirit is also a Ritsu pick. He's got he's got those three that you mentioned that's really popular. They pick quite a bit of Ember Spirit and sometimes the Slog, but both hard heroes to pick into a Doom. Yes, Remnant away is instant, but Doom can get around that with a Shadow Blade. The other interesting thing about the Ember Spirit pickup here is Slaughter amps up physical damage, which is the one thing Ember's afraid of. It's a bit risky. Yeah, it, it is. You, there's certainly that component that if you end up getting uh, caught there by that almost instant initiation followed up with Amplify Damage, a couple of right clicks, and all of a sudden you're down to half life. Uh, it's going to come down to what they follow this up with. Do they, they try and go for a very hard-hitting uh, offensive sort of carry? Maybe something like a Jug might be an intro. Oh, wait, no. What am I talking about? There's a Doom and a Slardar. Yeah, okay. We're looking for another support here. <laughs> um, well, there was, I think, uh, OG, the newly formed OG, did run a support... No, that was Alliance. Ran a support co-op in a lineup the other day, but I don't think they'll do it here for complexity. Yeah, but, okay. yeah... Probably not. Ritsu 13 and 4 also on Ember Spirit mm -hmm. uh, in his pro matches. This is a guy who loves the hero, knows how to play the hero. The Dark Seer already gone. They do take out the Dazzle now, which makes a lot of sense. That is something that, um, you know, obviously another hero that bulks on up those lanes and make sure you're not going to get taken out. Late game, there isn't any other substitute for what this hero is capable of doing as far as defensive capabilities, with the exception of maybe Io, who's also gone. I think that really they're looking for a Vlad hero now, um, and I'm not sure who it is. They could run the Lich with Vlad and maybe put him as a sort of helping out to Ten sort of shore up that mid lane and Wind Ranger's life a living hell, or put him in the off lane there, dual off lane with Slardar Lich. They go yeah, for the I Bane. It does feel like they were a bit light on the lockdown. I was going to maybe suggest something like an AA to punish the Wyvern, but they were really low on lockdown. And Bane will certainly help them. Another one of those heroes where if you can do it out of fog at nighttime, you can sometimes catch the Ember Spirit unawares, get the Nightmare on him, or just straight up Fiend's grip him. Nice way to lock him down. So, going to be nice. 
Cloud9 also looking for another support, although could be that they're looking for an offlaner. We still got a couple a people in the pool that can fulfill that. Yeah, it's, Ogre Magi is one that sort of comes to mind. Occasionally you end up seeing that just sort of run on over there into the mid lane and toss on out a little Ignite uh, just to mess with them a little bit. They've got, certainly got plenty of time to think about it. Haven't burned through a lot of their draft. It would leave them a little bit vulnerable with the Tusk Ogre. It's kind of, I mean, you can snowball into it, but it's a hero that we haven't seen that often recently. Um, yeah. Anybody that you particularly like, early roaming, or do you like more of sort of scaling into the late game? I actually would love to. I, they don't run it on Cloud9, but I think this could be a nice game for a Magnus, just because of one, the synergy with Ember Spirit, you help him farm up, and they've got a lot of stuff which benefits from an RP. Unfortunately, I don't think Cloud9 have ever run that on MSS, so I'm actually trying to check right now, because I think, yeah, they haven't run it this patch um, with this new team. I think it could really work here, and it's certainly something you can kind of do the roaming tusk so his lane doesn't suck as hard as it does being an offlane mag, but maybe not in their toolkit. Yeah. Time will tell. Uh, I think the other one that I've seen MSS run a couple of times is Nyx, mm -hmm. uh, which could be somewhat interesting with a couple of int heroes here. Really can tear through that Lich. Also the Queen of Pain, one of the new heroes that can sort of solo her relatively effectively, depending upon what goes on. And they do take the Ancient Apparition. Okay. That's really interesting. Not super what I was expecting. It's definitely a counter to Scorched Earth and... Depending on who's going to be the met carrier, Complexity potentially has an easy one in the Lich, but he's not someone who has his own sure lockdown, you know, Cold Feet, you need someone to be in range, and you can probably set it up with a Tusk Ice Shards, though, with the Snowball, so. Yeah. I, I think it's going to come down to execution again. Uh, I don't see a clear advantage as far as draft goes uh, and insofar as being able to completely and totally dominate another lane. Always when you're looking at a Doom, it's something that's a little bit scary. Swindles is going to be picking it up, so it's looked like he's going to be running the offlane here. Let's do a quick little introduction for the players. For complexity, we got Zizzy who's going to be playing on that Slardar. Uh, Z Freak is going to be playing the Lich. Chessie is going to be on the Queen of Pain. Moving on over towards the mid lane is going to be Vlad and Swindles on the doom yeah i'm still not sure if that's offlane or not just because of the role swapping that occurs sometimes on complexity but for cloud nine we've got one four three seven on the ancient apparition tusk being played by mss ember spirit on ritsu who's rocking a fun different name um brax on that windrunner and now wyvern on svg who plays a lot of this hero as well and i've seen him land some beautiful winter's curses but yeah, this what's for the early boots? Kind of interesting yeah. there. Probably wants to be the standard 2v2 mid action where he just harasses whoever's in mid. I was going to say it's unusual that they were all grouped bottom, but now they're actually spreading out a bit more. I think both teams having a good idea of where the other is and not wanting to contest the rune, but they might be headed up to contest top rune together now. I feel pretty comfortable with this, though, for Cloud9. I mean, you got Chilling Touch, you got the ability to take this fight if you want to. Um, they're looking a little bit scared at the moment, but oh god, oh, Vlad's gonna Vlad. end up finding him. He's gonna end up going down here in just a second. Chains, yeah, he wanted to do something, but it's a little bit too much damage too quickly, and Chessie makes his way out of there. Oh, SVG pops a salve. Probably meant to... yeah, probably didn't mean to. Hot, you know, just... Yeah. Just Dota things, but unfortunately that does mean he's only on two tangos for wherever he's going to harass, and they're running an aggro try. This is really interesting. You can certainly get off the cold feet if the searing chains come out of Ritsu on time, and it is somewhat of a scary try lane, as you just mentioned. You've got Arctic Bone, you've got Chilling Touch. It's... It's really a weird one, though, because of the long cooldowns. Like, they can only go every minute. Yeah, it's, it applies to that pressure, I think, that when the cooldowns are off, obviously Slarder is going to be able to move forward and get that experience, but they don't necessarily even have to commit all of the uh, spells to be able to make sure that they get the kill, because there's always just that threat with all the slows that are going on there. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Slardar and get, get a little bit of help in this lane, and Bane is going to be hanging out here, doing a stack and pull probably, and hopefully trying to make something happen. As far as this mid lane, though, Chessie is having a tough time so far. Five and one on Brax versus the uh, what is that? One and oh, <laughs> Queen yeah. Fain. Um, oh. Part of that, I think, just the early engagement. Maybe he was expecting some more help from Bane. Uh, instead, Bane had to go do different things. I think Chessie certainly has a fallback mechanism. Quop can farm the jungle a bit easier than a Windrunner, so it's not all lost. Zizzy, though, taking huge amounts of damage top as well, and complexity, as you've pointed out, having trouble in older lanes.
Yeah, definitely. And you talked about it, the fact that you don't want to end up having that happen against Cloud9. Uh, he got really close to being able to get taken out there, was able to tango dodge on through the woods at the last second while the pull was commencing. And um, just a little bit out of position, not, not a huge deal so far, but across the board you're hoping to see a little bit of oh maybe bottom lane gonna be able to make something happen they're just harassing away these lanes are so scary out of uh out of cloud nine except for bottom a little bit yeah the nice thing about bottom is of course that tusk can hide in that snowball for a length of time and he's probably not going to go down quite tanky unless he makes a misstep although the moment swindles hits level six you want to leave as the Tusk. If you get doomed, he's just going to walk at you with Scorched Earth. Gank looking towards mid, though, and can they get anything? Uh, not it looks looking... like probably not. I mean, yeah. they've got Nightmare and the DD. If maybe that was an Invis rune, I could totally see it happening. Um, but still waiting for that that moment to... It's like we talked about in the draft. It's a little bit of a, a tough matchup um, because you want to be able to sort of be aggressive and own your lane as a wind ranger but against the queen of pain it's just not super viable and just look at bane right here he's just the sort of guard at the the uh pass there as he's sort of dodging and, and making sure that the wind ranger doesn't get absolutely anything in this lane that's so frustrating yeah maybe if the bane can get level two he can also be more of a pain he can put the enfeeble up really nerf brax's damage but still we're seeing kind of the downside of bane in that he doesn't have a lot of great lane control yeah just throws out the casual nightmare it's it's not the best, though. Um, it's certainly not what some other heroes like the Wyvern have to counter, or the Lich even with the Ice Blast. Yeah. Well, a bit of a slow start to this one. 19-3 um, and three on the Ember Spirit. Ritz is getting everything that he wants in this lane so far, and uh, does have that Mango on up as well for that passive regen. Is there any so far thing that you're looking for to be the, the, the big item that you think is going to mean that somebody can go? Or is it just a sort of uh, combination of being in the right place at the right time? I feel like that Zizi needs the blink, obviously. You've got a couple other things where Lich wants to maybe get a few levels. Ember Spirit, though, as you mentioned, like, he can't really go all gosh. Zizi's actually thinking about going on him. He's gonna Slithering Crush, but the sprint, it's on cooldown. And Zizi, I don't think he has a way out. He can try to TP, but they're gonna catch him, and he is dead. So, a bit of a misplay there. I think, unfortunately, a lot of Complexity's heroes need big items before they can go. And this falls nicely for Cloud9, because Ember Spirit's content to wait out the form, as is... Um, uh, Windrunner, who wants her agonims, of course. Totally. Ooh, jumping on in there. Just going to be able to apply a little bit of harassment off to Brax. Hasn't committed the Windrun yet. Will now. And there's the runaway. Just applying that harassment does break the bottle of Chessie as well. Why not? Biz rune or not, we're still going to yell at you. Um, and Queen of Pain... Now up to level 5. This mid lane hasn't gone the way that Brax wants it. Thankfully, he is still going to be able to solve back up and get back into here after the poison duration ends up wearing off. But still, it's it's not how you necessarily want to go. He's been able to come back into the lane somewhat. Like, 20 and 5 after the sort of miserable start that he had is pretty good. Oh wait, oh, I'm flipping those up. Yeah, the it was Chessie who was having a rough time, and this is just the power of Quop. She has the scream, she can farm down waves that way. Also, as long as they're getting their stack on, which we can see Vlad doing now, she can flash farm. She may be about to take some Arctic Bone. I don't think they can kill her unless they get a shackle, but still, it's going to force her to go back and bottle a little bit. Yeah. Really showing the power of that Quop there. Um, mixing up games as well. It's all fine, all good, all wonderful. Uh, Vlad now moving on up in this top lane. He's going to try and see what he can do here against the uh, sort of creep cutting that we're seeing Cloud9 do. to just having a field day here. 32 last hits at just about 5 minutes. 2,700 net worth, 600 against the next highest. And across the board, I think that that's probably probably going to be the difference maker. I guess the question that I have is if this is going to end up being sort of a more fighty style that we see sometimes from Ember Spirit where he picks up an early drums or if it's just going to be straight on into that battle fury. Uh, I think he can afford oh we actually have an engagement searing chain slash here comes the snowball Zizzy oh he manages to dodge the ice shards but not enough when the snowball lands so he goes down. Personally I think the Ember just because of the heroes he's up against can afford to go the greedy bots build and I know that's one I've seen Ritsu do a few times but you're not wrong. They do some of these players switch it up and i think if he sees any sort of pressure he may end up going phase boots or treads then working on his battle fury there's a lot of options here for him and i think it also depends on brax is farming well but you know if brax maybe gets ganked a few times he's like look i need to come help out so yeah certainly a lot to do there uh, this bane though i have to say Vlad not maybe having the game impact he wants. They're trying to go for a gank in middle, it looks like, but I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, goodness. 
It's coming in, and actually the scream onto Brax. Brax is just gonna go down. Sonic Wave misses though, and he might phone out. Is he getting the bottle to him? Then he's not going to, and so suddenly Chessy, a big mistake there, and yeah, the salve out, saving Windrunner. That's gotta be frustrating. Oh, MSS coming in a second time. It's gonna be able to land the shards down. Oh, That's a pause. <laughs> yeah. It's um, gonna be fine. Uh, Chessy looks to be fine with the blink away. Don't worry, it's all fine. <laughs> um, but that was definitely pretty close right there. Could have been a kill if he wasn't so quick on the draw with that blink away. Uh, and the other thing there about that Sonic Wave is you can't necessarily blame that one on a uh, on something along the lines of like a. Uh, uh, a ping issue he's still in the u.s right now at their house as well yeah. um unfortunately the wind ranger not in a position where she's going to be able to shoot on down this queen of pain and bottling on up should be perfectly fine here yeah so um mss maybe in a little spot of trouble he's gonna be nightmared up do they have the follow-up to return around on him yes they do goodbye mss and yeah he almost got the kill on chessie though so i feel like it's one of those it unfortunately didn't go right but you you have to go for that play if you can take out chessie you've done a lot of work so this Doom as well, I kind of wonder how he's going to itemize. I think there are a lot of options for Doom. I He's an offlane Doom. He might be the one going the drums, like you mentioned before, maybe picking up an early Vlad's. It seems like that. He's got the Bassy already. Um, I kind of like that sort of aura Doom, particularly if you try and group together and push as a unit. I don't know if Complexity's lineup are great at that until the Slarder ends up getting his Blink Dagger, but it seems like you could go for this type of route. The Phase Boot's there as well to mean he's going to be able to be in position to uh, really take it. And of course, the, the big nerf that ended up happening with Doom was the change to the Aghanim Scepter, I feel like. Obviously, the duration, or not the duration, excuse me, the cooldown of Scorched Earth was in important as we might be seeing a gank up in top but the fact that agnum scepter is no longer worth it every single time is a little bit different dizzy is going to take a lot of damage here snowball forward as well as the ice shards he's going to fall kill yeah. four risk that ember spirit to see changes on over that aggro and saunters away happy as a clam ember spirit always the man swindle does manage to pick up a kill on the ancient apparition on bottom lane he did have to use the doom but still a good kill for him and he's just going to walk away from this incoming uh, mss i think it's still totally worth it even though it's a support for doom to get this kill and he he is rich you know he is farming up a storm <laughs> as you expect a doom to yeah definitely 1800 gold on him oh chain oh. frost going forward by wind ranger <laughs> gets the shackle on off but at the end uh does end up paying for his life with that uh, unfortunate there yeah really nicely spotted out as well this ward doing lots of work there for the lineup of complexity in this game despite a slow start starting to pick up very even complexity is a little bit ahead in experience you can say a lot of that's because of lich and the fact that doom can leave the lane jungle a bit and free it up but it might help them out in the long run of course having up that ult already on lich while the aa is still only level f five almost five yeah, go. they've been able to get those supports the levels that they needed with the exception of Bane. Uh, drums are going to be the first item picked on up for Doom, so he's going to be running around super duper fast. And it looks like they might be going aggressive up in this top lane again, or maybe just Brax is rotating up to try and take the tower. Oh, ends up hitting his... his Dyer's top tower there. Is under attack. So, nicely done. Oh, looking for their chance to kill here now. It's just going to be cutting the creep wave. Two points in the sprint means that Zizzy's going to be running around so super fast and can be pretty aggressive, but um, looks like this tower is going to fall regardless. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, right? The sprint, you can you can make an aggressive move on someone, but a lot of these heroes, maybe you go aggressively on them, they just walrus punch you in the face, you take the searing chains, and of course the damage being amplified because of sprint, it's a bit of a pain. But they got the top tower. Rax is probably feeling good about that, this, and also, I have to stress, Ritsu is farming out of his mind. He's also level 8. The trade-off between mid and off and safe lane, or in this case, the tri-lane Ritsu, is that you basically trade farm for levels, and he's getting both. So, he's having a ball on this Ember Spirit, and I expect a lot of impact regardless of whether he goes bots or rushes Battle Fury. Absolutely. Man is ready to start fighting, or at least ready to start farming. One of the two does have the invis room now. He's going to try and do a little bit of hunting in the jungle. And if all else fails, he can just take on out these camps that are here. Looks like they might be able to find Zizzy. He's <laughs> going to turn around there. Probably a good option. It's a little bit terrifying if he ends up happening. Four heroes up top. Uh, going to scout him out. And yeah, he probably should back on up at this point. 
Although, I don't know. All right, he's thrown on down the uh, amp damage to be able to scout a little bit. There's the jump forward. Remnant's going to connect. That's a nice little uh, crush, but I think he's still going to fall. Too much damage too quickly, and nobody there to be able to come in and save him. Z-Freak tosses on out the chain. Frost going to connect on to Ritsu, but no real follow-up at this point. Trying to jump back in again. Maybe MSS is still taking a good amount of damage. Complexity is chasing now. Vlad is looking for the opportunity to Nightmare. Jump forward. Jesse's going to be able to connect with the dagger. Another little kill. Maybe they deny MSS here in a second. Oh, no. The Salve, Brain Sap, staying alive. Can he survive? No, he's going to end up going down. Queen of Pain gets that kill. And it looks like Brax is going to be able to get away this time. Brax's shackle there was insane. It's the second one. I mean, he died to the co-op earlier with the shackle here, but it was still a pretty dang good shackle. Very quick reflexes, and that second shackle there probably could have saved MSS if it weren't for the Bane getting in range for the Brain Sap. But in the meantime, Swindle, he takes bottom tower. He's at least getting objectives elsewhere, and he's finished his drums. He's back up to 1,800 gold. Probably a Vlad or a Shadowblade. It just feels like this game, because of the Windrunner, because of some of the other heroes, Shadowblade a bit better than a Blink. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely a, trying to figure out what it is that you want to go for. Um, oh, I thought I just heard chains. That was just Mr. Uh, Ritsu, I imagine, farming away down here yeah. in the bottom lane. He's going to be going for those boots of travel. He's going to be everywhere all across the map whenever he needs to be. Vlad's as that second item So you're talking about. Um, well, we're kind of in this interesting stage right now because while Complexity have been winning I think a couple of these team fights, they've been able to farm a little bit more effectively too. Uh, Cloud9 are about to start to get some of these big ultis online. Winter Wyvern just hit 6 a couple of minutes ago after getting all of that solo EXP in the bottom lane. AA has 7 now. You combo up some of these and all of a sudden the whole dynamic of this game starts to turn around and it looks like they're going to maybe find out Vlad. I don't think they want to waste the Winter Wyvern ulti on him though. I think they might even just blow it. Just It's a long cooldown. The other thing to mention about Winter Wyvern and AA, a lot of times Winter Wyvern's ult, it reduces 70% of the damage on people who are cursed to attack. Oh, we've got a snowball in and it looks like Vlad's going to be taking a blast walrus punch. Is that enough? Have you used enough on him? Anyway, he's going to go down and now Swindle's trying to find someone, but he gets shackled up and the cold feet will latch as well. Winter's curse having Z Freak attacking, but Quap Sonic Wave on the back lines. Here comes the Lich ult. Isn't going to bounce, but this is a very isolated SVG and he is just going to go down. I was going to say before they blew everything on Vlad, um, the Winter's Curse reduces 70% of damage of uh, units attacking the Cursed guy, so it means that if you, you know, Winter's Curse and then someone Sonics waves them, a lot of the damage is reduced, but because with A Blast, you care about the debuff almost as much as the damage, it's still awesome. Like, if you A Blast Winter's Cursed units, you're fine, because you got the debuff on them. Yeah, totally, and... I, now that they ended up having to use all of those, how do you defend against Roshan? You know, Winter's Curse is not going to be up for another 70 seconds. They toss on in the AA Blast, which is going to do a lot. Oh, there's the jump on in. They're actually going to be able to do a ton with this one. Walrus Punch, Jesse is eliminated. Roshan still not falling. Swindle is caught off to the side as well on the Doom. They're going to be able to Fiends Grip him, though, and it looks like Swindle's going to be able to survive through this. Roche still alive over here. Vlad is going to be able to Nightmare on up the Wind Ranger, not going to be able to do any damage, and maybe they can turn on her now after all that AA Blast is done. Swindles is still alive. Brax dropping low does still have the true sight on top of him. Zizzy has another crush in two seconds if they're able to make seven. Nice shackle again! Gonna be able to keep him alive. The buyback by the Queen of Pain was the other part of that whole engagement that's worth keeping in mind. Still trying to chase here. This fight started so long ago. A Blast on top of Chessy as well as the Cold Feet does end up getting caught in that, but I don't think that he dies here. There's gonna be the kill on the Ancient Apparition. SVG soon to fall as well, and just like that, Complexity is starting to tear apart these heroes. I sure it's going to block off Swindles from the rest of the herd. Snowball forward. He's going to take a bit more damage. Waller's punch down as well. The Nightmare keeping him alive a little longer. Oh, Ritsu still stunned on up. Swindles ends up falling. Another Ice Shard's going forward. Do they have enough to get out of here? It looks like it. Tusk was finally able to kill off the Bane, and the Wind Ranger finishes off the Doom. Finally, Lich falls, and when the dust settles, I don't even know. What's going on, Llama? It's definitely a team fight in favor of C9. Um, even though they lost out on the Aegis there, they burned one, the buyback happened, and also they managed to get a bunch of return kills, so certainly favorable for them. Going in for the kill on SVG, the Winter's the Cold Embrace, they shouldn't have bothered after that, you know, even though you have a lot of damage to kill him, you should have just left it and walked away. Unfortunately, they got wrapped on, and Ember Spirit's gonna be really happy with this. Um, average timing this patch on Battle Fury, 25 minutes. He's already got his bots, his Aquila, he's perfectly happy to get more. 
Uh, Chessie, sitting off to the side, doesn't have an Orchid quite yet. Is that actually being brought out on the Curry right now? No, it's just a TP, and they're not going to be able to find him. Doom was thinking about it, almost able to get that off, but such quick reflexes. Ember Spirit gets away. What a day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really, it's Ember Spirit things. He generally always escapes. That's why uh wouldn't be surprised to see Swindle go for something else. This, Vlad's means he feels like fighting Oli with his team. And Quop is also going for an Orchid, so it's, oh, did that ward see the smoke? I think, uh, it was close. I think it was behind the tier 2 tower, so. Yeah. If they were watching, they would have seen the animation for it, but I don't think they did, because we don't see anybody backing. If if they had seen the smoke, Ember Spirit would have been gone. But can they get anything? The Fiend Scarf is online. They go in for the blink, and they manage to catch him. Will they? Oh, oh gosh. He's going. He's gone. Lich ulti, it's following. It's it's sad. Maybe he'll oh. walk by the creep wave. Oh, no. If he walks, no luck. SVG. Oh, no. <laughs> That would have been the worst if SVG was standing there and they just bounced around a little bit. Oh, the reveal of the blink as well. That's so frustrating. You really want to be able to get a kill there. Yeah, first blink always something you want to get a kill on. Luckily, Zizzy still has the Aegis for another two minutes. Maybe they can try to make something happen elsewhere. And look at all these sentries coming out from C9. They really want to make sure their jungle is safe for Ritsu. It makes sense. You know, you need to be able to ensure that that is safe. Radiant they don't have the best vision over by the Roche pit. Uh, actually, never mind. I take that back. This one ward off to the side here is going to give them pretty good vision. Um, and also, Complexity haven't really been able to take it back. I think mainly by virtue of that big team fight by the Roche area, they were able to get on in there and deward all of the wards that were in the mm -hmm. jungle um, by Complexity. So we kind of are going back and forth here. Tier 1 towers are down for both sides, but it's also just the safe lane on either side so the mids are still standing i'm not exactly sure like clearly obviously complexity has a bit of a lead but it's it's not feeling super secure and not as far ahead as i think that they might hope to be they um, have another problem in that their lineup peaks a lot earlier i mean you can argue that doom he's always there to erase one if he gets refresher two heroes out of the team fight but slaughter isn't exactly a position one carry that ends up hitting for a lot of damage oh goodness and we're going to be seeing queen of pain chessy walking to a bunch of them there's the snowball can they catch him out here comes the ember and chessy is just dead a block to make sure and now zizzy falling as well that is ages so can he get any sort of fall? There's a Doom on the Wyvern, so no Winter's Curse here, but everybody's just escaping. And this time, they might be able to pick up a Wyvern. Will there be the deny? There is from 1437. Well played. Let's see if Swindle's acting like a race call can get any sort of follow up. Slithering Crush, that's AA going down. And now let's see about Ritsu. They're coming back around on the other side of the fight. The Fiend's Grip stopped by the Shackle. I'm not quite sure if I saw that right. And so it looks like Brack's gonna be able to just walk this one off. They might be able to get the tower in mid, but it'll be close. And uh, Ember Spirit comes. Coming back in, Ritsu, he doesn't want to let this one be over. He dodges the Slithering Curse. Huge amounts of damage to sw uh, Swindles, and now a Snowball in onto the dead hero. We're going to have Farming Lich ulti while the Shackle up on Zizzy means that he is in a spot of trouble. The ult is still bouncing, but it's done, and Brax has taken no damage. The Ice Shards end up picking off Zizzy, and this fight has gone horribly for Complexity. They need to get out. Vlad is still standing there, taking a lot of damage. Can he just auto-attack down? Ritsu, the Sonic Wave is going to finish him off. But a Winter's Ghost means they'll pick up Vlad and Chessie, most likely, and Chessie is blown up by the Ice Shards. Uh, but the ice balls, this team fight, I think it's finally over. I don't think they'll get dizzy. Oh, as I say that, they snipe him. Oh my god, with the keck at the end as well. Yep. Oh, team wipe. Cloud9 Ooh. looking so strong. I will say, I think that Slardar blinked into AA ult as well as just all of the damage coming out from the Ember at that last second because he was trying to disrupt team fight. Didn't realized that the AA blast was coming in and just got eliminated mm -hmm. at the start of that one. That We're looking at a 2,900 gold swing roughly as well as 3,000 experience. A team fight that started right about here on the map and ended up just going all the heck on over everywhere. Um, it was crazy. Walrus punch yep. on in on top of Zizzy. Can he survive this? Doesn't get hit by the AA blast and will be fine in the end. Snowball. Oh, Vlad's still here. Can keep him alive if they want to. Meanwhile, the Winter Wyvern is wrapping around on the other side. They're going to be able to tone down Zizzy here, I think huge amount yeah. of kill nice defensive nightmare but i don't think it's going to be enough he does end up falling winter wyvern picking up that kill on cloud nine firing on all cylinders bottom lane again they're going to be chasing on down swindles ritsu is all over the map and they're going to be able to take him on out the power shot finishes him goodness gracious cloud nine so savage 
Yeah, they're doing really well this game, trying to get some payback for that level 1 Roshan game. I also think Zizzy made a few mistakes there. I guess he didn't think he was the snowball target, because normally when you are the snowball target, you draw the snowball deeper into your team. But I think he moved away, thinking... He was thinking, I don't want to be stunned in the path of it. He was thinking it was going to Bane. Not important either way. Wyvern getting super rich, probably working towards her blink dagger. We've also- oh gosh, we have ice shards. Is this going to be anything forced off from Z Freak immediately? I wanted to talk some about items because we've had a bunch, but everybody's dying. <laughs> everybody's dying all over the map. Ancient Apparition was able to pick on up the Midas. We got Tusk with Blink Dagger Urn. Uh, Ember Spirit, as we've been talking about, trying to build on into that uh, Battle Fury and should get it relatively soon. Only about 1200 or 200 gold away from finishing it off, excuse me. Meanwhile, the Wind Ranger Aghanim Scepter just purchased. Winter Wyvern trying to build in that Glimmer Cape on Doom Vlad's, as well as Drum's Phase. Blink Dagger on the Slardar, Orchid on the Queen of Pain. Everything looking fairly normal. Force Staff as well as Cloak on the Lich, probably into a Glimmer Cape. Any items really stand out to you here that uh, are going to be game changers? No, I do like the Shadow Blade from Doom. I think it might be too little too late. Having lost their early advantage, it is something where I really feel like Cloud9's lineup descends into late game better than them. And while Doom was ahead for a while it doesn't feel like he's far enough ahead to be such a big pain also the a midas he's gonna have that agonims really soon and i think this is the best decision by complexity they are actually looking for a kill but if they can just push bottom and not have to engage it'll be better for them as you mentioned the team fight for c9 right now it's fantastic yeah they're ready to go they i mean I think particularly also, they don't have a ton of Minus Armor on their team, uh, no medallions or anything else like that at this point in time, but still the Winter Wyvern, or excuse me, the Wind Ranger with the Aghanim Scepter, it does out a ton of damage. Like, it's not going to burst somebody down incredibly quickly, but with the combination of everything else that they've got going, the magical damage, the fact that that constant little chip over and over again is pretty important. Yeah. Um, let's see, Z Freak. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how they get back into this game completely. They don't have a hero like that Dark Seer or, you know, the, the Winter Wyvern on their side. Well, Chessie ends up going forward. Yeah. Rax oh. gonna end up getting teared apart. Yeah, that's a kill. Yeah, so I wasn't sure which of one of us was getting that one. And yeah, as you said, it's like really... Oh, Fiend's Grip actually up on Ritsu. They've stopped the Fiend's Grip, but the Doom's already out. Can they catch Ritsu? Ice Blast on Vlad in the meantime, and it looks like Ritsu's falling on the back line. Vlad's just gonna get killed off by MSS. He's trying to delay the inevitable, but he goes down. Where are the rotations? They're chasing onto Ancient Apparition, managed to pick him, and it looks like MSS has escaped, but suddenly a good team fight for Complexity, and I was gonna say Smoke Ganks will do it. I didn't think they'd get one this successful. Yeah, it's huge. I, I mean, look at the gold swing. Uh, about 2,500 roughly. You've got a heck of a lot of experience. They're going to take a tier 3, tier 1 off of this. Definitely not a tier 3. Um, but Maybe. You never know. Maybe this push will never stop. That's true. Um, I mean, the other thing here as well is that, like, if you take a look at the, the gold lead that Cloud9 have, sure, they scale really well into the late game, but it's only 3,000. No team has extended yeah. their lead beyond a 3,000 gold lead, and that's going to sort of mean that they're in a situation as SVG might end up dropping yet again here. Uh, no, they're going to back on out with the potential for TP rotations. Don't want to mess with it. Um, the game is always throwable. That's essentially yeah. what this is. Like we saw earlier today, I think in Dreamly, like a 10k or a 15k net worth lead vanish in the space of five minutes. Uh, you can always throw these types of games. There's the catch on to Ritsu in the bottom lane. Doom coming on out. Need to be able to get it, do they? No, don't end up popping it, unfortunately. Zizzy was hoping that Ritsu would man fight him, but Ritsu, he, he knows you're not. Like, he knows that he could beat uh, Zizzy in a man fight, and so therefore he couldn't have been alone. Right. So, very obvious. And now they've scouted the Shadow Blade as well. Mm. So, that's pretty unfortunate for the lineup of Complexity, because Swindle actually hid parts of it in his stash in hopes that it wouldn't get scouted. And goodbye, Z Freak. He's going to full stealth away, but he's still very, very dead and just going to go down slowly. In the mid lane, it looks like we've got a Fiend's Grip as well, though. If they can pick up Rax, but here comes Ritsu. He's got the Searing Chains. Chessie, will he manage to use the Sonic Wave to kill anyone? At the back lines, his teammates are all going down, and he doesn't have Sonic Wave for eight seconds. Colt, Winter's Coast, locking him in place, and the Power Shot going to be what finishes him, but helps finish him off. And yeah, all of that going wrong from Complexity. As we mentioned, very back and forth. I have to give... C9 the edge with their heroes. And Roshan's back up. 
<laughs> ready to go again round yeah. three uh right there in that last fight chessy was 10 seconds away from being able to toss out that sonic wave at the end and it just ended up uh coming off of cooldown when he died so a little bit frustrating there would have loved to be able to wait for that last little moment but not going to be the case this time around and the other thing that you mentioned here the fact that slardar doesn't necessarily scale the best into a late game carry uh that's particularly going to be the place if you go for this very mobility focused uh build where you go for this four staff blink dagger you know blink dagger alone sometimes you would end up seeing slardars go for like the armlet into an ac or something else like that but they need him to be that initiation as we do end up seeing the doom go down on top of rax and he's about to fall here in just a second i don't know deny oh. oh race they're gonna be able That'll... to deny him i think yeah brax is gonna be fine swindle's probably gonna go down here snowball to the face and the lich oldie do enough work with an a boss keeping him in whoa that was an interesting interaction with the full stuff. Swindle does explode and they don't get the kill on Brax, who's healing back up on the sidelines. Zizzy might be able to escape, does manage to just TP out. You have to be happy that at least one of your mates escaped, but complexity not taking a favorable engagement. But Swindle's was super deep. Like, you have to know, you're right next to a tier two tower. You can't yeah. be playing up there when you're behind. They did like a little gainer. He did like a, sort of the walrus punch backflip into shooting forward. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I think that if that play works, it's one of those things where it's sort of, if the play works out, awesome you're amazing if it doesn't work out it's all or nothing and that does feel like what complexity need in this game at this point they need to really sort of double down on the aggression and hope that it ends up working out their way um and if it doesn't like and this i think maybe a sneaking a roche is that what they're going to be doing here um no, no they're just trying like to get in position they want to take a team fight but as we've mentioned their team fight feeling like it's lacking and i don't know if this is going to work out for them we've got busy starting with the initiation ritsu is silenced up if they can kill off the wyvern but she's still alive popping that windows curse on the side they all oh, ritsu might just die to that boss i don't know if it's going to follow him but we've got a war punch the wyvern's down the ember spirit does end up dying to the lich ulti and now we've got a 3v4 on our hands is he getting a big slithering crush and chessie killing off people with that magical damage the shackle for once for brax they didn't latch and now they're following him up they should be able to blink forwards catch him out of position and Brax is gonna fall scream missing but slithering crush and auto attacks gonna do the work so a nice job there by complexity getting the team wipe and uh I kind of expected wherever Ritsu remnant had off to he'd be able to heal but I guess his remnant mustn't have been inside the fountain that was enormous 4500 gold swing and 4500 mm -hmm. experience and yeah the the lich being able to finish him off before essentially he did anything because he was silenced and then yeah. the only thing that he ended up doing there was tossing on out the remnant because of just how effective they were able to get the initiation if you don't end up getting the silence from the queen of pain at the same time the slardar crush comes on in i don't think that team fight goes as well and now they're going to be able to take roshan off the back of it aegis up on chessy all this uncomplexity are back in this game and um i mean they were never really out of it i i don't, don't want to say because it's just it feels like as the game goes later cloud nine are going to have a better oh. time fighting so i i I guess the, the lineup is more suited towards Cloud9 winning late. That doesn't mean that Complexity can't win late. Anything can happen in these late game scenarios and maybe your team ends up going a little bit on tilt because of something that happened earlier in the game and Complexity can get back into it. We'll see. I'm very I excited. Think <laughs> just the lost team fight was perfectly, as you mentioned, very well executed by Complexity. They worked on taking out the Wyvern early and also taking out the Ember Spirit. He was silenced up. Wyvern was disabled by the Bane, so it really got rid of quite a few of those heroes that would wreck them up in the team fight. But either way, they still have heaps of work to do and. Uh, Vlad being the nice workhorse, holding Jesse's wand, but other than that, having his glimmer cape up, that could be pretty big, because you can try to glimmer cape into Fiend's grip. It, it's something that just helps you a little bit. Yes, certainly. We'll, Even uh, with the jam on MSS. Right. Well, the other key thing here, um, Ritsu is now going to be going for a Lincoln Sphere, it appears. So wanting to maintain that survivability, there's a lot of single target spells here that can maybe break this. The thing is, is he's just going to need to be really on point with responding to the first one. Level death into Doom isn't going to be quick enough for him to be able to uh, get the Doom off, I don't think. Maybe you end up comboing something with like the Orchid and a Frost Blast, uh, but that's going to require like a Blink or just being in really great position by the Lich. Yeah. It does feel like after this ends up coming up, the team fight, oh god, unless just Swindles dooms him from the high ground. I don't know, they don't think they can fight this one. They, they need to be able to have everybody there for it to work. As you mentioned, it's something where you really need the jump, and that's what Ember does. Remnant is instant cost point. If you don't get the jump, 
He, like, even having to expend level death on him, that's enough time for the Ember to get away. So, and Lincoln's really nice here, and it's a game where maybe you can argue he needs a bit more, something like a BKB, but he just, you can't afford it. There's quite a few things here which go through BKB, and just the... Uh, just the Lincoln should be enough to waste spells, but they want to go on to Ritsu before he gets it up and actually sort of going for the Doom. Just gonna walk out into the into the creep wave. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> love back. Um, do end up spotting him over there, TPing away off to the side here. Ancient Apparition just gonna run away, no problem at all. Um, it's gonna be building. I'm assuming this is not going to be a Yule Scepter. This is almost certainly an Agonim Scepter, uh, but occasionally you do see Yules on Ancient Apparition, and it's really strange. Uh, yeah, it's it's most likely the Ags, as you said. Potentially something where maybe they've like, oh, cool, guys, we need a full stop really quickly. Maybe we, they said they need the Yules to stop out the Fiend's Grip, but as you said, I'm pretty sure Agonims. We've even seen players sell their items if the high ground push is coming to make sure they have the Ags for it because the increased duration up to that 17 seconds, so good. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It, it just com is completely game changing. Uh, and I, I think the other thing is when you're dealing with these heroes that have incredibly high mobility, like the Ember Spirit, that ability to make sure that you can't regen it means that even if you get away sometimes if you dole out enough damage with a doom if you dole out enough damage with just the right clicks or whatever he still can go down and it, it's it really can be a, a huge game changer yeah certainly something nice and it's going to stop the healing coming out of the doom they don't do they have a mech carrier yet sometimes z freak will end up buying it doesn't look like they have one but they have the urns from oh goodness they're catching out dizzy the shackle doesn't latch but he's blocked out by the shots oh he's gonna fall stomp away and get out doesn't even get hit by the a block and swindle thinking about coming back in has his shivas up they're all slowed dooming brack slithering crush to follow up but suddenly they realize maybe not the right part of town here comes jesse though and with a well-placed sonic wave he could kill a bunch of people there it goes a scream no, just auto attacks will do it and they're not able to deny off Brax MSS running for his life now he's gonna just blink away could just be an easy tower push for the lineup of complexity I don't think they'll get much more out of it than that as Ritsu trying to force them home by pushing out top lane as well he's doing everything that he needs to do Mr. Ritsu uh, this lane is gonna need to they need to wait for the creeps again the key thing Thing right now he doesn't have his Lincolns up quite yet and we did just be able to finish off oh there's the silence this could be the moment right now he didn't end up hitting the crush but the silence is to their bash one time oh the queen of pain has a sheep stick too oh he remnant into the wrong remnant oh goodness he's just dead I I'm I think a bit of a mistake he had a remnant further back but yeah he must have clicked the wrong one and they still had him have damaged uh oh yeah, he was hoping to be able to get out of there, but unfortunately that Remnant, of course, gonna be the one that he casted. That's the one he goes to. Fight recap. 800 golding. The key thing, though, is that, like, the gold doesn't matter as much as the item slowing down. Because now, well, he bought the Lincoln Sphere recipe. Okay, so he's fine. It's not the worst thing in the world, but still, you don't want to end up losing this time when he could be farming. 50 seconds is a long time. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it's complexity giving themselves more and more of a window, right? They very much, we've discussed it, they don't have the late game. You just need to extend your weird mid-game window and see what you can make of it. The other thing I want to bring up is Swindles going for the Shivas. I have to say, I like it a lot. It's really, I mean, yes, you have stuff like Focus Fire, but it's going to help them quite a bit in team fights, And also, it gives vision. So, something, just little things where maybe the Ember has a remnant up in the trees and you're able to scout it with the Shivas. The other thing is keeping the lanes pushed out. You take a look at what this lineup from uh, Cloud9 is trying to do right now. You've got the Wind Ranger who's going to keep on power shining them. This is going to ensure that they get that later stages. And for complexity, they want to be able to keep on pushing. They want to apply the pressure. And, uh, you know, Shiva's Guard is a good way to nuke on out that creep wave in conjunction with the Scorched Earth. And maybe even being able to save the Scorched Earth. So that way, if you get jumped on, you have that extra little bit of regen to survive throughout it. But as I say that, the A Blast is going to end up coming on in. Dole out a good amount of damage to Swindles, and I think Radiant they're going to be able to take that tower. No questions asked. They've got gems as well up on both teams. It's something I really like seeing. It's... I maybe wasn't expecting it on both teams so early, and it's kind of unfortunate for Complexity at least. They haven't been able to scout. There are quite a few deep wards that they've just not managed to walk over with the Lich, but should help their map vision. I really also like Chessie's build-up. While I love Aghanims, it certainly means you can fight more often. I think they understood Sheepstick really needed against Ritsu, against the Windrunner. 
And now that they have Lincoln Sphere on up, you have two ways to be able to break that. So you drop on down the organ first, immediately follow it up with the sheep stick. Um, and my fingers aren't that fast, but I'm sure these people are. So that was going to end up working out for them. Uh, yeah, he'll probably see. ship queue it. Um, Chessie is a very experienced player, so I have to imagine he ship queues it. But Windrunner has up her blink, has up her chrysalis. Brax is now hurting. If he manages to hit you, you know, maybe they Winter's Curse the Doom. Brax will kill him off in the space of that Winter's Curse. Yeah, we were talking about sort of the peck, peck, peck that you end up seeing a lot when you're uh, playing the Wind Ranger with just the Aghanim Scepter. And all of a sudden, that's a lot more damage that's going to be doled on out. And we'll see how Doom is going to be able to deal with it. Honestly, any hero. Oh, there's the Doom down on top of 1437. So much damage from the level death. He is going to die, but it looks like Swindles might end up taking life as well. And there's what we're talking about. Shackled immediately into it. So much damage doled out. And the slow coming out as well from the Sigil. Going to connect. <laughs> Look at it. Oh... Okay, that was. They that. I think that they miss. They they knew the t uh, shadow blade was coming off of cooldown again, and maybe mm. they were worried he'd somehow get away. But they have a gem on tusk, and as you said, not a hundred percent sure that was needed. It could also have been the nervousness of they didn't actually see anyone. I know they did. They should have seen the rotation by the dire. But either way, you know, you can just say, hey, we yeah, we used the winter's curse, but let's just not take an engagement for a hundred seconds, which for the lineup of Cloud Nine, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, and I, I mean, again, we're sort of in this situation where you don't necessarily want to rush all this stuff down. You don't want to fight a ton. You have stopped their push effectively. You don't need to take an objective yourself. Keep on farming. Like, they're not going to be able to push again until Doom is back there and back on up. They're going to hit another shackle on a Zizzy. Oh, that poor stuff might have kept him alive right there. Uh, but they're comfortable at this point. Like, the, the, you know you're, they're not going to push again without Doom. You know they're, they're not going to push again without the spell back up. And by the time he is back up it gets out there winter's curse is going to be back up again as well yeah 100 percent. and uh i don't know exactly the right spot it feels like they need to pick off both teams might just be eyeing out roshan as well which is a super long spawn coming up here the game plan it's going to be interesting because ritsu he is still farming up a storm on this ember spirit He's almost going to be able to build into... Is that the second battle for you that he's going for? Chessie actually breaks the link and is not able to quite find the kill there. Um, or he's going for the Daedalus. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Roche responded in a minute. They were able to get Doom back off of cooldown now. Shadowbladed on up. They want to try and find a kill. But it looks like Cloud9... Oh, actually, they're going to find him here. Uh, Brax looks to be the Doom target they're gonna go for. They end up breaking on out there. No Windrun is off there, but Ritsu in the middle of all of them. Walrus Punch down on top of the Doom. He is burning very quickly. He already got his spell off, though, so he's in a pretty good spot. Zizzy is in the middle of all of them, able to catch Brax with the stun. Still not dead throughout all of this. Chain Frost bouncing around. Looks like Z-Freak might end up going down if he doesn't end up being careful. Oh, God, Ritsu's back up. He's dealing so much damage. Jesse is gonna be able to toss out the Sonic Wave, but misses again, and MSS was the only one that was targeted with that one, and he still survives. Three heroes dead for complexity <laughs> just like that it's, you start with the initiation with the doom and you're still not able to find a kill okay something i have to clear up because folks don't seem to know this if you're can you mouse over the remnants uh skill for a second because some folks need some education here folks you get to target which remnant you arrive to just in case folks don't know, you get to choose where you go. So Ritsu really did choose the wrong remnant. It's whichever one you click closest to. You, the targeted remnant is the one you go to last. You do jump through them, but you get to choose which one to go to, and he could have chosen the further one away. As we see Ritsu again in a pot of trouble. At the full stuff, will it get Zizzy in close enough? Ritsu popping out a remnant. He's going to try to do the go away thing, but there is going to be a blink up in one second, and they see him slithering crush lands. Do they have the damage output, though? They're pinging out the next remnant, and they managed to pick up Ritsu here. So well played. <laughs> They do, but they're <laughs> XD tossed out as well. Um, Cloud9 now, feeling comfortable taking on out Roshan. They ping it on out for complexity, so it looks like they're going to come and try and contest this, if at all possible. And the damage is there, but is it going to be enough? It looks like Doom is going to be there in time. No, they're, they're not. This is going to be dead. They're going to be able to get Roshan here now on Cloud9. Um, always good to clear things on up there. Twitch chat, she's left on the ground. Brax ends up going on back for it. Oh god, that might have actually costed them now. Zizzy ends up getting the amp damage. Nice shackle, gonna connect after the four staff, snowballing up to the high ground. Continuing to chase, there's the catch. Brax is gonna end up potentially going down. Does have cheese up. Alright, dodges the AA blast. Alright, I think Yeah, Ritz is still dead. They should be able to get the secondary- holy cow! Um... Oh. There we go. That was an auto attack that did half of Brax's health. 
<laughs> yep, that's oh, goodness, injured. and they're going in further. SVG caught out of position, taking Taunt into a little bit of a piggy. And now Zizzy, thinking about going further, he doesn't want to burn this BKB, but I think you, ju you just got to go for the safe play. And suddenly three dead. Ritsu should respawn before this, but A lost down for at least a few seconds. Actually going to be up right about now, and with Ritsu spawning, maybe you can time the two. Yeah, oh god, Winter Wyvern's still a little bit away from buyback if they need it. Wind Ranger has been able to have it as well now. So if they want to fight this, they can, but they're going to be without the Winter Wyvern for another 30 seconds. Uh, I think that at this point, Complexity can probably just take this chess. He ends up being four step back away. Walrus Punch down, keeping him there, but there's the Fiend's Grip. Going to connect for so long on MSS. Three people caught as well. Oh, Sonic Wave coming out. Oh, the A-Blast wow. is not going to be able to be enough, and they're all dead. Oh. Yeah, that was. Uh, this isn't the you know like lost games you're costing with the seven k uh, gold on the AA. He went down, buys back. They've got a secondary gem that they might be able to steal up, but I don't think they're saving their melee racks. Looks like that one for sure gonna go down. And really well played from complexity there. That, the quap getting out alive there was beautiful. <laughs> No, totally. It was awesome. I mean, you, you get away there at the very last second with the Force Staff and then the Blink back into the Sonic Wave forward. That completely and totally changed the dynamic of that fight. It is a 4,200 gold swing as well as 5,500 experience. The buybacks happened and the A Blast, they're all back up. They might try and go for a round two here. Do they have the ability to take it? I'm not exactly sure. Winter's Curse is back up again, as is the A Blast. They just need to spread out and be very, very careful about their positioning. And it looks like they're able to get the melee backing on off a little bit chesty is going to remain strong on the high ground and take on out this last barracks here Radiance middle barracks has oh man me oh my bkb picked on up on the doom and just like that those couple of team fights complexity look at the gold swing yeah, this game has been all over the place. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. Taking a rax will definitely give you a big buff of gold like this, but it's certainly now looking like it is com in Complexity's wheelhouse. They do still have a few tier 2s to get down, so certainly something where Ritsu with the bots can try to make work happen all over the map. And he's actually, instead of finishing a full Daedalus, he has two Chrysalises, which is an interesting choice. Huh. I think I'm just not wanting try to make sure. Oh, I, it's it's the way the chrysalises work is they check one and then it checks the next one. So you're gonna crit crit more frequently this way. Your crits will be smaller, and of course, you don't have as much damage. But he could be right here, depending on if they can get complexity to group up. Yeah, I I think that this would be a. I mean, you want to be able to make sure that you're able to dole out the most amount of damage possible as quickly as possible in these types of fights, uh, particularly with the Winter Wyvern there as well. I'm wondering now, so Refresher up on the Queen of Pain does not have Aghanims. Uh, kind of interesting, just sort of that one big burst, and now the cooldowns are somewhat uh, equitable, a 60-second difference between the two of them. Do you think that you go back for Aghanims at some point on this Quap, or is it worth it just to sort of stick it as is and maybe go for an AC next? I really like the Refresher. I think she's doing the right thing for the team fights. If she will need the Aghanims, it's going to come out if they are being pushed themselves. So I think continuing to go, knowing that you're ahead, continuing to push your advantage, getting something like the AC, or uh, she might even go for an Octarine. Oh goodness, we have a Slytherin crush onto them. There's going to Sonic way. Oh, can she get off the second one though? She, she isn't using the Refresher. They're just planning on killing off everybody here. And Chessie holding it, finally pops that Refresher. Going to have a secondary BKB and she is in their base. So is Swindle Melons. I'm not sure that they'll actually catch anyone out here. And those may have just been wasted BKBs for the both of them. They got some big kills, but not sure if it was what they needed to do in complexity, because they still have tier 2s to work down. Well, and it's the reveal of, uh, as we see Z-Freak four staff away, it's the reveal of the refresher, and also mm -hmm. they don't have this tier 2 now, so kind of funky. <laughs> um, Definitely the right exactly one sure. for it. Double gem up on the Lich as well. Uh, so... <laughs> All right, we'll see how this ends up going. They're going to be able to take down this barracks at least. Do we have buybacks on the Tusk or the Ancient Apparition? No. They're going to try and push their luck at least for a little bit now. The Quap is just so freaking farmed. Chessie is playing amazingly well right now. 24,000 on him. Uh, next highest is going to be Doom, and he's 4,000 behind him. So they're in a good spot. I think that at this point in time, Kalexi are just comfortable to sit up here, and they don't even need an Aegis to go for this one. 
Yeah, it's certainly... Oh, goodness, the shackle onto Swindle. Do they have the follow-up? They certainly have the damage, but they can't see him because of the Glimmer Capes and the fact that they lost their gems. And there comes Chessie's Sonic Wave again. Another melee racks, but here comes Ritsu. He's getting a few crits. Ice Blast's gonna help him out. Chessie isn't gonna take the damage, but certainly gets the debuff replies. And Swindle's may just... Oh, he's got a long way to go. It's 17 seconds. With the Glimmer Capes, he shouldn't shatter. So they do get one another racks. I also want to say that I think... If you've got to be a hero up against defending your base and dealing with Megas, Battle Fury Ember Spirit, one of the ones you want to be. Absolutely. No, if, if you want to be able to sort of survive to the late stages of this game, that's the hero that's going to be able to keep you there. And while it is a 15,000 roughly gold lead, as well as a 12,000 experience lead, it's still one of those situations where you never know. Like, they've got the A Blast, they've got the damage coming out from the Ember Spirit. Uh, Winter Wyvern is just one of those heroes that can change the dynamic of a team fight so completely just by the virtue of that one skill that um, you're never going to feel comfortable here if your complexity you you might just end up losing it if you get a little bit too overconfident and certainly there have been bigger throws than this before if they do end up uh taking this game yeah 100 percent. it's safe to say i think though that this is complexity is to lose as much as a is this fantastic late game hero as is wyvern one of the people i'm worried about falling off here is mss on that tusk yeah you can still make big saves with the blink with the snowball but he doesn't have a damage output type of build, and the ice shards at this point in the game, with a lot of heroes being more mobile, have... Okay, Queen of Pain is building an abyssal? Am I seeing this right? <laughs> Sorry, got distracted. Train of thought, I was trying to say Tusk starts to lose some of his effectiveness, just with the way his hero scale, uh, scales, although ice, uh, the snowball, always great. Quop! Yeah. Double Abyssal. Why not? That's great. That's I, awesome. It's not bad. I just wasn't expecting to see it on Queen of Pain. Um, Fully. Absolutely. I, this is the hero worth noting, by the way, that I think that when they were playing in the game show tournament, she ended up going like Manta first. Um, Chessie is not afraid to go for uh, very interesting and unique builds. And um, I don't think that this is the weirdest Queen of Pain item that I've ever seen before. Manta first probably was. But still, I, I think you, you see the need in your lineup you see the need for the serious lockdown you already have the um or the where did you Spirit, see the first? Back up. I when did you <laughs> I, I saw it in a game with 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 chessie actually chessie was the one that went manta first on queen of pain i don't know it's why chessie. it's it chessie things apparently <laughs> if it worked we can't even get upset at him can we but the smoke gank on a break, and MSS, he goes in for the Warriors Punch, the A blows completely off the mark, and Zizzy, he's gonna get Winter's Curse up, Brax pounding into him, even with the Doom on him, Zizzy is fallen, but it looks like Brax will be soon to follow, and a Sonic Wave, Chessy managing to catch a few, he doesn't have another refresher, but oh, they've isolated everyone, and Warriors Punch Man, MSS, the only one left, and they just call it. I GG, absolutely spectacular. Complexity able to make that one happen. The snowball looked like it was going to be a good save there by the tusk, but not able to happen. And Complexity, take game one. This is the elimination match. If the Cloud9 lose this one, they're going to get knocked out for the two separate tournaments two <laughs> times in one day by Complexity. Start of a rivalry? Maybe.